In 1963, Mary Kay Ash retired from the workplace. It wasn't because of her age or her energy or her skill. She had been a top earner for two major sales organizations in a career spanning 25 years. In fact, she was so competent that she'd often trained the men who later became company executives. That's when she finally got the message. There was no way for a woman, no matter how smart, talented, or skilled, to move up the corporate ladder and achieve her highest potential. So she made the smartest decision of her life. She quit. And six months later, when she came back, she came back a winner. I decided to write my memoirs, hoping that perhaps I could help other women over some of the problems that I had encountered. So I began by writing down the good things the companies I had been with had done. And then it occurred to me that there were a lot of things I didn't think they did right. So I took another legal size pad and began writing down the problems. And one day it occurred to me that if you're so brilliant, how would you have solved them? And then I began writing out, almost like working a crossword puzzle, how I would have handled a situation had I had the opportunity and the responsibility. After reading my marketing plan that I had on paper, I thought, this would do it. This would give women that chance that I wanted them to have. And if I just had a product now that would be just terrific, then the product and this could make it happen. Find a need and fill it, if you're talking about business. Find a need, something that people need very much, and then fill that need. So if there is something that is needed and you can find that niche and fit into it, then you have the foundation for a successful business. The goal for us as a company is to become the largest and the best skincare company in the world. She was convinced that career fulfillment need not just be a masculine privilege and that uh, feminine ingenuity should not be wasted, and that given the opportunity, women could and would aspire to the heights of success and become all that they could be. In the beginning, she did not concentrate on a product. She concentrated on the plan. She was creating opportunity for women, and she really believed, based on her own career and her own observations of women in business, that given the right kind of plan, uh, they could be a lot more successful than, than they believed or for that matter, anybody else believed. This is a vision that others in our industry have acknowledged within our Direct Selling Association. I saw a value in having a purpose in my life that was bigger than my own little world and Mary Kay has developed the structure that allows, in fact, requires you to develop to your potential. There was no end to the money we could make, the people we could meet, the growth, the personal growth that we could have, the future that we could have, the seminar prizes and all that grandeur and applause. It was a daring idea. Mary Kay was attempting to create a framework for a sales organization that would thrive on the strengths familiar to women. Where mutual support and teamwork laid the foundation. Where women were encouraged to set their own goals and help other women to achieve theirs. And every accomplishment, no matter how large or small, would be acknowledged and rewarded. But what would they sell? I had been using a cosmetic for 10 years that I thought was absolutely fantastic. It had done wonderful things for me personally, for my family, and for my friends. So I went out and I was able to purchase the formulations for that cosmetic. I put that with my marketing plan and that was the beginning of a company. And it, it just grew as Mary Kay knew it would, just word of mouth. Mary Kay said she did not have the budget for a lot of slick literature. She wrote what was printed. The concept of the company became superior skincare products that women would sample at home and order from a personal consultant. The next step was to create a formula for one really successful sales unit that would be duplicated again and again as the company grew. And Mary Kay was everything. She was, of course, she was the sales manager, she was the recruiter, she was the sales trainer. Uh, she 
worked, was the only person that knew all about the products. There was nothing in the company that she didn't do, except, of course, for the books, which her son Richard took care of. The, uh, but it soon became apparent to her that she couldn't grow the company uh, if she were doing all these things herself personally. And so they evolved a plan that's become our director plan today. In 1965, 66, 67, we had small director's meetings, but they were so, so interesting. Thanks to Mary Kay, she always thinks of everything, and she's always ahead of everyone. She's 10 or 20 years ahead of everyone else. So she had more interesting people come in and talk to us. We finally created a wonderful position of national sales director. And those were the ones that Mary Kay said would be the Mary Kay ambassadors. And then they went out to teach all the things that they had learned from Mary Kay. I feel the role of a national sales director uh, is to really be little Mary Kays around the world. Uh, Mary Kay allowed us to grow from consultantship to director and on to national um, because we were developing into leaders uh, reflective of her leadership. Mary Kay created this to be a direct selling company where women could buy wholesale and sell retail and make a good profit and climb to whatever heights they wanted to climb and build the income that they wanted to build. Mary Kay taught her consultants to respect the golden rule and recognize what she called the invisible sign worn by everyone. The sign that says, make me feel important. Make me feel important. And if we keep that in mind that we're really there to service the other person's needs, you'll never have to worry about the money you make because money is a measure of the pleasure that you send into the lives of others. So service rendered, money back. But if you'll keep your perspective really on the other person, servicing her needs, remembering the invisible sign, and if you're, if you're doing the right thing, you'll never ever have to worry about that you're out of integrity. So that's what it's taught me, love and integrity in business work. I will recall sitting down in my first uh, long visit with her, uh, and I thought that I knew how her plan worked. I thought I knew how her philosophy of selling uh, worked. We had had the same roots in direct selling. We learned from some of the same people. But I couldn't have been more wrong because she was focused on service, not sales. Selling is an honorable profession. It makes our world go round, as a matter of fact. And she always was proud to sell something if the product had quality and if she was doing it in an honorable, integral way. And so that's what she's always taught us, to, to feel proud of what you're doing, to hold your head high and realize that you are performing a wonderful service for the world in making all of us beautiful. Because we're selling not just clean faces, we're certainly not selling cleansing cream. We're selling youth and beauty and hope and self-esteem. So this new company, based on service rather than sales, on setting goals and receiving acknowledgement for reaching those goals, on enriching women's lives, began to make news. The media looked for labels to describe this new business model and the quiet confidence of its leader. Are you a feminist? You believe so much in women and the cause of women. That seems by definition to make you a feminist. I guess I'm right in the middle. I want women to have their cake and eat it too. <laughs> what I'm saying is I want the respect and the admiration, everything that goes with femininity. But at the same time, I want women to have an opportunity to use their brains and to become whatever they want. And I think they can. So you started the women's movement to some yeah. extent, yes. <laughs> I guess we were the forerunners, actually. Yes. And here's the best part. We're not just talking about it. We're doing something about it. Mary Kay was famous for giving praise and recognition. She believed that long-term goals had to be supported by small steps, and that each step was best recognized with a reward, which ultimately led to the famous pink Cadillacs. But it all began with a golden goblet. And it was a prestigious honor to be in the Golden Goblet Club. And we gave out many, many, many goblets. In fact, so many then, she came up with gold pieces to go with the goblets, gold casserole, gold trays. Well, some women had whole closets full of golden goblets, and so Mary Kay decided that she wanted a program where you could wear your report card on your lapel. And so Mary Kay 
switched to a program called the STAR Consultant Program, whereby we received ladders and gemstones indicating what our quarterly wholesale orders to the company were. And my goal to begin with was to never miss a, a quarter putting a star on my ladder of success. And I was real fortunate because I had two consultants in my unit who also latched on to this program. And today, because of the Star Consultant Program, and because we all went five straight years without missing one quarter putting a star on our ladder of success, today we're national sales directors. In the early 70s, we had Mary Kay Knight at the ballpark in St. Louis, and we were trying to give all of our superstars a chance to be on the field. So one of my directors said, well, let's put them in red jackets. So that's what we did, and we had Mary Kay Knight at the ballpark. Mary Kay threw out the first ball, and um, she said, what are these girls doing in those red jackets? And we said, well, they had to recruit three people before they could get in their red jackets. She said, I like that. She went back and then introduced the red jackets into the company. Mary Kay was just a genius at being able to spot a really great idea. But she never hesitated once she, she got an idea, no matter who from. She would take that idea and she would run with it and make it a winner for all of us. From its entrepreneurial beginnings with $5,000 in seed money and a vision of service and integrity in the workplace, the company thrived. In only a few years, demand for the product had grown so great that it became necessary for Mary Kay to manufacture all of its own products. In 1969, a manufacturing firm called Goodyear Inc. was acquired and became a wholly owned subsidiary under the new name of Cosmetic Creations. From 1970 to 1980, a new facility was built in three phases. And in 1976, the company was listed on the big board of the New York Stock Exchange. And it was at a time when our growth was expanding so rapidly that we uh, needed the money to be able to do the things that we needed to do to expand. By now, there was no doubt that women could join the ranks of outstanding financial achievers and do it in a way that served their higher aspirations. Her constant focus was field support. Anything that she could do to help us keep our businesses on the cutting edge was right in line with her thinking. As the company enjoyed tremendous success, the recognition programs grew ever more creative and the awards more glamorous. The person who becomes queen of any category at seminar, we have a lot of categories, uh, she receives a B, diamond B. And anytime you see anybody with a diamond B on, you should at least bow. <laughs> at least bow. <laughs> All right. I read that aerodynamics had proven that the bumblebee's body was too heavy to fly and the wings were too weak, but it went right on flying. And I thought, that's just like women. They just don't know how great they are. And then my husband turned around and gave me a bumblebee for Christmas, I think it was, and everybody wanted one. And so we put that in as the queen's prize. When we were about three or four years out and doing very well, I went to the Cadillac dealer here in Dallas, and I said, I want a new Cadillac, and I want it colored this, I want it painted this color, color of our lip and eye palette, that pink. And he looked at it, and he said, oh, you don't. Oh, my goodness, Mary Kay, let me tell you how much it's going to cost you to get this thing repainted when it gets here and you don't like it. And I said, no, I want it pink. Please paint it pink. And they made her one, and she drove it to the office proudly. And when all the directors were so excited and had a fit over it, they said, oh, we want one, too. As I remember the first Cadillac program, uh, the first year, five directors earned the use of the pink Cadillac. And I think that was the real turning point. It was a status symbol. That was the beginning of when we really had something big to work for. The Pink Cadillac, which rewards independent sales directors for outstanding sales achievement, was to become the most coveted award in the company, and a symbol identified all over the world with Mary Kay's Women of Achievement. Today, the Mary Kay organization boasts GM's largest commercial fleet of career cars, with a value in excess of $130 million. How we decided on prizes then, as time went on, was that I thought, 
What does a woman really want? What, what does every woman in her fantasy dream about? And I think that nearly every one of us would love to have the experience of walking down the runway and being proclaimed Miss America. And not many of us are going to get that chance. And so I thought if we could make that fantasy come alive. So we crown our people queen. We put a tiara on their heads and we put a mink coat around their shoulders and a diamond ring on their fingers. And, and we send them off down that runway with a bouquet of roses. And for a moment, they are queen for the day. And so by offering these fabulous Cinderella prizes, we do ever so much more than we ever thought we, we might do. And she wanted to give Cinderella prizes because she knew that, most, for the most part, women are not going to spend money on themselves in extravagant kinds of jewelry, for example. So she would give us a fabulous jewelry piece so that we would always be able to look at it and remember our moment of glory on that stage when we'd achieved. The prizes were never given because we were cute or because we were lucky, but always for achievement. Now, are you ready for the most exciting night of your life? Yeah. All right, we're ready. Nothing has been more exciting, instructive, and inspiring than the annual seminar. Mary Kay knew that women have a natural inclination to form a family unit and to work cooperatively. The seminars are proof of this. In the early days, these were informal gatherings where Mary Kay prepared the banquet meal, and each woman who had reached her next goal received recognition. Today, the Mary Kay seminars have been compared to the lights of Broadway in their dazzle, display, and elegance. Seminar is an empowering experience for the sales force. It's where we have education and we learn how to be the best consultant and be the best sales director, but it's also the recognition and where our belief barriers are broken. And it's also to renew your dream. You have to find a renewed spirit. You always will get caught up in the spirit of people who believe in you and people who you see up there that maybe you can relate to. In 1968, I'd been in the company for two years and I came to seminar a day early. And when I arrived at the hotel, there was no one there but directors. I was frightened and shy, and you know, those women took me in and made me feel so special. I don't think I've ever felt so accepted in my life as I did that day. But what I found when I went to seminar was the company. And I went, oh my goodness. I mean, these people really care about you, and they praise you to success, and you feel so good about yourself, and it was, it was really overwhelming. Mary Kay's entrepreneurial spirit and the principles on which she founded the company prevailed, even as the company became publicly held in 1976. But over time, the need to answer to stockholders began to compromise the ability of the company to respond quickly and decisively to the sales force. So in 1985, Mary Kay accomplished one of the largest leveraged buyouts in history and returned the company to private ownership. And how nice that no more shareholders are telling us that now that we have become a more mature company, we should change our pink Cadillacs to gray. <laughs> Today, there are over 600,000 Mary Kay consultants. And as their personal and professional aspirations evolve, Mary Kay's example of integrity, a flexible business model, and leading edge products combined to provide opportunity and career fulfillment for women all over the world. When I first started selling, our, our products were so limited in those days because uh, we had a very limited line and yet we were so excited and so thrilled to share with women's skin care. And uh, today, of course, we have the number one selling brand and we've come a long way with our products. One of the things that we've always concentrated on in the labs is staying ahead in the science. And we have a very active skin science and research program within our own lab. And that really enables us to develop the latest technologies in a way that we are abreast of all the latest trends. When I first started my career in Mary Kay, we didn't have the shades for the African-American woman. But I saw 
the opportunity and what it could do for me and my family. When we opened Mexico, which was in 1988, and we were very excited about that. And Mary Kay wanted to be so connected with them that her first thought was, I'm gonna get the staff and we're gonna take Spanish lessons. And she instilled in us that you get connected to the people that you develop. After you offer them the opportunity, then you become committed to walking the journey with them through the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs. Whether they stay with you a year, a month, or a lifetime, didn't matter. It was your commitment to them. And we had that from her. Team spirit, a sense of community. These are the heart of the Mary Kay organization. And nothing attests to this more than the adoptee program, which allows a director to recruit a consultant in any city in the world, knowing that the new recruit will be fully supported by a local director. It's made it possible for us to operate without territories. You go any place, any time, and maintain those recruits for your own. You keep what you build. That all came from the fact that when I was with Stanley, that didn't happen. They transferred me to another place, and I had to give up everything that I had built in Houston and, and give it up and start over again. And I thought, this is not fair. So you get to keep everybody you recruit from Hawaii to Ohio to Michigan. Where? I consider that an extraordinary concept. As far as I know, it's completely unique to Mary Kay. It says volumes for the go-give spirit in our organization, Mary Kay's own belief in, in helping women to achieve. Mary Kay's achievements have been recognized the world over. In 1988, the Smithsonian Institute featured Mary Kay in their series, The Great American Entrepreneur. In 1999, Mary Kay was honored by the Lifetime Women's Television Network as the businesswoman of the century. These are among the many prestigious honors and accolades awarded to her over four decades. A remarkable testament to a woman whose leadership was never focused on herself, but grounded in her belief in service. Mary Kay blazed the trail in the area of economic liberation for women. And as we expand globally, she has given women throughout the world an opportunity to enrich their life and to build a better life for themselves and for their families and to build their business on that solid foundation and philosophies and principles that she built stateside. And so it just continues. We are dedicated to passing on those philosophies and keeping Mary Kay's dream alive. By the year 2000, Mary Kay was doing business in 36 countries with annual retail sales in excess of $2 billion. And that's the story of our company. It's my heartfelt wish that every single person who has anything to do with Mary Kay would be the richer for it, not only financially, but spiritually and every other way.